All right. Welcome to the first episode of the Cap Rack. Um, it's going to be a 10-minute show every single morning going through all the betting lines you have to know um, from MLB to NBA to NHL, anything um, just to kind of save you time going through all of your sports betting apps, uh, CBS Sports, ESPN, anything, uh, wherever you get your information, just so you don't have to basically go through and kind of sift on your own. I'm going to go through all the lines for the day, um, take all the fat off, and just give you guys the important information. So opening day was yesterday. Um, Yankees Nationals, uh, rain shortened, five innings. Yankees won 4-1. Um, Dodgers won, I believe it was 7-1, 8-1. Um, at home against the Giants. Um, it was a close game halfway through. Um, then the Dodgers pretty much blew the doors open. But today we have a full slate of 14 games. Um, starting off at 4:10, we have the Atlanta Braves versus the New York Mets at City Field. Um, Mike Soroka on the hill for the Braves. Uh, Jacob deGrom on the hill for the Mets. The Mets are actually minus 150 on the money line. Braves plus 130. Um, just initially, really not much. Mets, typical Mets. Um, opening day lineup. Seth this is probably going to be DH. I made a bet with Nick, probably going to lose that, um, that he's going to be in the lineup on opening day. Um, for the Braves, I just think they're the division winner this year. Um, I think Soroka is good enough. He had about, a, what, I think a 2.68 ERA last year. Um, his wins were a lot more than his losses. I think it was about 15 and four, 16 and six, something like that. I don't know, but I like the Braves on this today. Um, it's either a dog or pass. I would not lay minus 150, even with Cy Young winner um, Jacob deGrom on the mound for the Mets. Um, it's just not worth it for me. Um, all right. So next we got Detroit Tigers versus the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds are home. Uh, we got Matt Boyd on the mound for the Tigers, Sonny Gray on the mound for the Reds. Uh, the Reds are minus 160 on the money line, plus 140 for the Tigers. This is one I really like today. I'm really high on the Reds. Um, I just think their lineup is really potent. They're Rotations coming through with Sonny Gray. We got uh, Trevor Bauer. Um, but today we got Sonny Gray on the mound starting on opening day. Um, minus 162 is a little steep to lay at home, but I mean, I think it's warranted here. I think it's a comfortable line. Um, I could, the Tigers are abysmal. They're terrible. Um, but the one I really like on this one is um, Reds minus 1.5 at plus 112. You're going to get plus money on this. Um, if the Reds win, I doubt it's going to be a one point game or one run game rather. Um, so, yeah, that, that's going to be one of my picks today. I actually wrote a blog about it, so check that out. Um, you can head over to CapsOnSports.com. It's on the homepage. Um, all of our betting picks are listed underneath our blog stories. Um, pretty much, yes, that's where you can get that. Um, next, so the Reds game is at 610, Mets 410. Um, so we got 640 in Tampa Bay. We got the Blue Jays visiting the Rays. Um, Hyunjin Ryu on the mound for the Blue Jays. Um, Charlie Morton on the mound for the Rays. Kind of surprising. I thought Blake Snell would be the opening day starter for the Rays, but I guess they're going this direction. Um, the Rays are minus 126 on the money line. Blue Jays plus 108. Um, I'm going to stay away from this on that because Ryu is a little bit sneaky here. We saw him with the Dodgers um, the past couple of years. Um, he can get the job done. Um, he had a really, really good year. I believe it was either last year or in 2018 where he had like close to a two ERA or something like that. Um, Morton, I don't know what we're going to get with Morton. I'm leaning towards the Rays here, um, but this is something I'm going to stay away from. I'm going to see these teams play out a little bit more. Um, the Rays are definitely going to be good this year, but other than that, I don't, I don't really know. I'm not confident to take them on opening day. Um, moving on, we got the seven o'clock games, the Miami Marlins visiting the Philadelphia Phillies, um, Sandy Alcantara on the mound for the Marlins, Aaron Nola on the mound for the Phillies. The Phillies are minus 200 favorites. I think it's warranted. Um, while Alcantara is their number one starter for Miami, I mean, they're, it's still the Marlins. They're, they're, they're coming along. They got a bunch of young guys coming up. Guys are going to want to watch out for this year. Um, but look, Phillies minus 200. I think this is a game they absolutely get done. Uh, their lineup is just way too good. They can absolutely get to the Mar uh, Marlins pitching staff. Uh, this is a parlay favorite for me. Um, I think if you can throw this minus 200 line in there to kind of beef up the odds of a parlay, I think it's worth it. Um, I'll touch on something a little bit later, including the Phillies. I actually included a parlay in my blog with the Phillies, but I'll get there once I cover the second game. Um, moving on, we got 7-10. Um, the Brewers visiting the Chicago Cubs. We got Brandon Woodruff um, against Kyle Hendricks. Um, line's pretty much even, minus 108 for both teams. Um, another one that I'm going to stay away from. I don't know what the Brewers are going to be like. It's just a team that I want to see play out a little bit more before I put my money on them. Same thing with the Cubs. I mean, 
They're, they've been good, but they've been a little bit shaky here and there. So I'm going to wait and see on them. Um, the total set at over eight and a half. It's at Wrigley Field, um, which is very, um, very based. The total pretty much is very based on the wind because wind influences how far the ball travels in Wrigley Field a lot, just based on the structure of the stadium. So if the wind is blowing out towards game time, I can see going over eight and a half. I mean, both of these lineups can put up runs. So we'll see. Um, Next, we have the Kansas City Royals against the Cleveland Indians in Cleveland. Danny Duffy on the mound for the Royals. Shane Bieber on the mound getting the opening day start for the Indians. Uh, Indians are minus 225 favorites. Royals plus 192 on the money line. Again, two teams. Royals aren't very good. Indians kind of that middle of the pack team trending down. Um, I'll take the Indians in this one, but I mean, this is not, I'm not laying minus 225 juice on them. So this is going to be a pass for me. Um, moving on, we got the Orioles visiting Fenway Park, um, playing the Red Sox. We got Tommy Malone on the mound for the Orioles and Nate Evaldi on the mound for the Red Sox. Red Sox minus 205 favorites, Orioles plus 176. Um, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to get for Evaldi. He had like a, over five ERA last year. I mean, it's not something I'm going to lay uh, two times my money on here on a favorite money line. So, again, I'm going to stay away. I recommend staying away from this one for now and just to see kind of how the Red Sox pitching staff plays out. Um, Avaldi's a guy that can actually do a pretty good job for them this year and take over that ace role. He's not like a, your bona fide ace, typical ace talent that you're going to see, but I mean, he can get the job done. We saw it in the playoffs um, the past couple of years, but for now, I'm going to stay away. Um, then we got the Colorado Rockies visiting the Texas Rangers. Um, another one, minus one away on the money line for both. The total set at over eight and a half. I, I mean, look, the Rangers are trending up based on past years, but I just don't know what I'm going to do with them going forward. Um, I want to see both these teams play out. The Rockies have the lineup, excuse me, to compete. But, again, pitching staff is the problem for them. So, again, I'm going to stay away from this one. Moving on, we got a really good matchup here in the Central. we got the Twins with Jose Barrios on the mound um, against Lucas Giolito and the White Sox. White Sox are home. They're actually plus 102 on the money line here, just based off value. If you can get the White Sox and Giolito, who's a Cy Young candidate for the past, I mean, starting last year, he's going to be going forward. He's a real good arm for the White Sox. Um, they just added Edwin Encarnacion, Yasmani Grandal to add to um, the core of Tim Anderson. So, look, the White Sox are going to be a good team this year. I picked them to win the division in the Central. Um, I don't know. Barrios has the tendency for the Twins to basically just go out there and Kind of throwing clunkers once in a while. He's not that steady ace that you can rely on. So if you can get plus money on the White Sox here at home, I wouldn't hate that pick. If not, I would stay away. Um, next, moving on, 8-16 start. We got the Pirates visiting the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. We have Joe Musgrove on the mound for the Pirates. Um, Jack Flaherty on the mound for the Cardinals. Cardinals are minus 176 on the money line. Pirates plus 152. Cardinals lineup is a little bit weak. They got Paul Goldschmidt, but they lost Ozuna. Um, everybody else is pretty much middle of the pack bat. Jose Martinez is on the raise now. So look, I don't know if you have to take this, then go with the Cardinals, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. I think it's something you got to stay away from and see if the lineup for the Cardinals can actually show something before you rely on their bats. Um, moving on, we got the Arizona Diamondbacks visiting the San Diego Padres, uh, but Madison Bumgarner is making his first start as a Diamondback. And we got Chris Paddock taking the ball for the Padres at home. We got the Padres at minus 152 on the money line. Now, when I looked at this last night, it actually, I think the Diamondbacks were closer to about one, uh, plus 110. So, trending up, I mean, we're, you're getting money on the Padres here, which, I mean, I don't truly understand because the Diamondbacks have the ability to beat the Padres here. Like, the Padres aren't overwhelming. Um, they've been bolstering their team. They're trending up, but they're trending up very slowly. Um, Manny Machado, Fernando Tatis, um, Eric Hosmer, guys like that. I mean, they have the guys. It's just I don't trust them necessarily yet, and laying minus 152 at home is not going not gonna to get it done for me. Um, I actually recommend taking the Diamondbacks today, especially at plus 132. I was good on them at plus 110, um, but plus 132 is definitely a good line for me. It's a good value play. Uh, that game is at 910. Then we're moving on. We got the West Coast games. We have the Seattle Mariners with Marco Gonzalez on the hill against Justin Verlander and the Astros in Houston. Um, as you can imagine, Astros huge favorites, minus 320. Uh, you get 270 on the money line for Seattle. 
Um, I actually really like the Houston Astros minus one and a half here. We don't know if Jose Altuve is going to be in the lineup. He got hurt in uh, the last summer camp game, but they actually put him back in the lineup for the final or the second. He got hurt in the second to last uh, summer camp game, and they put him back in um, in the last one. So who knows if he's going to be in the lineup here? But regardless, I think the Astros are a, like a world's more talent than uh, than the Mariners are. They should win this game by two or more. I think laying minus one and a half at minus one fifty two is okay. Um, especially at home, Verlander is going to stifle the Seattle bats and it's probably go seven innings, maybe zero or one run ball. Uh, we got a rematch of the San Francisco Giants and the Los Angeles Dodgers. We have game two of the series, Jeff Samarja on the mound for the Giants, um, Ross Stripling on the mound for the Dodgers. Um, minus 235 for the Dodgers. We got plus 200 for the Giants. I don't know, initial takeaways from this one, Stripling is a good good guy. I mean, he, he can throw, but it's just not something I'm going to lay minus 235 on, regardless of the bats. Um, I, I'd be looking at the over here, over nine. I mean, the Giants showed that they could hit yesterday. They didn't cash in much, um, only scoring one run, but they, they were threatening against Dustin May. But I, I don't think Ross Stripling's as good as Dustin May is. I mean, he's got plus stuff. Um, I'm really excited to see how Dustin May develops. But if you had to take this, I might go over nine on this one. The Dodgers can tag up Jeff Samarja. Um, and I think the Giants can contribute their runs in here. But the Dodgers are going to win this one, in my opinion. Um, but going over nine is definitely the play for me. Uh, moving on to the last day of the game, we got a 10 o'clock game. The Los Angeles Angels going to the Coliseum in Oakland. Um, Andrew Haney on the mound for the Angels. Frankie Montes on the hill for the Athletics. Getting the start over Sean Manaya on opening day. The Athletics at minus 150. The Angels at plus 130. Um, one thing to note, Anthony Rendon is not going to be in the lineup for the Angels today. Uh, their new $300 plus million dollar man to add to their core of Mike Trout. Um, I don't know here. I mean, this is a toss-up for me. I, I'm leaning towards the Athletics. I think minus 150 is something that you can take on the Athletics here. Haney has lost three of his last three starts in 2019. Frankie Montas didn't let up an earned run all of spring training and summer camp. Um, I think he's going to be able to keep these bats under wraps here, and that's pretty much going to be it. Um, moving on, I'm just going to run through my betting picks for the day. Um, I mentioned that I have the Braves at plus 130. I think it's a great value play. I think the Mets aren't going to be able to score much. I think their lineup is very weak. Um, so if the Braves can put up two, three, Maybe four runs. I mean, I don't think they get much off the ground, but if you can get them into the bullpen, I think that you'll be all right. I like the Braves' um, value play at plus 130 on the road. Like I said, the Reds, 100%, minus one and a half at plus 115. Um, the Astros, minus one and a half. Um, and then my parlay of the day is going to be the Cincinnati Reds, minus one and a half, and the Philadelphia Phillies money line. That pays out plus 219, uh, which I think is a great value play. I think the Phillies are for sure going to beat the Marlins at home. And again, love the Reds today. So that concludes the first episode of the Cap Rack. Um, I hope I stayed under 10 minutes. I'm not sure. But regardless, uh, good luck on your bets today. You can follow us on Twitter at Caps on Sports, on Instagram at Caps on dot sports. Um, check out the website, CapsOnSports.com. Um, we're posting blogs. We're posting pics every single day. Um, pretty much going to be it. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you tomorrow morning.